paper that I led is on measuring the masses of groups of galaxies based on how these galaxies bend light that is left over from the Big Bang. As the universe evolves, matter clusters and the amount of clustering that you have at different periods of the universe is determined by the nature of dark energy and whether or not the theory of gravity that we use, namely Einstein's general relativity, is correct or not. In this paper, we show how the relic radiation left over from the Big Bang, known as the cosmic microwave background radiation, or the CMB, behaves like a backlight that can be lensed by clusters of galaxies, and how we can determine the mass of these clusters of galaxies by looking at how much lensing there is in them. We use data from the Atacama Cosmology Telescope, which maps out the CMB. By performing a mathematical procedure on these maps at the location of known groups of galaxies, we were able to determine the amount of lensing due to these groups of galaxies. This allowed us to determine the average mass of these groups of galaxies. We're hopeful that this procedure can be used to map out the masses of clusters of galaxies at various stages of the universe's evolution. Such measurements will allow us to measure the clustering of the universe as it evolves in time um, and help us to understand the nature of dark energy and gravity better. I wanted to tell you quickly about our recent act paper on a measurement of the thermal stimuli of Zoldovich one point probability distribution function. Uh, so the, the idea of this measurement is, is pretty simple. Uh, basically, in the observed act map, uh, there is the signal from uh, galaxy clusters basically casting a shadow uh, against the background CMB due to the thermal Sunyaev's Zoldovich effect, which occurs when CMB photons scatter off of the hot electrons in the clusters. And people have used this effect to, to find clusters uh, and then to count galaxy clusters, which lets you constrain cosmology. Now, in this approach, instead of actually finding individual clusters, uh, we basically just account statistically for the cumulative effect of all the clusters in the map, uh, just at the, at the map level. Uh, so we had done this a couple of years ago um, with ACT, uh, but focused just on the, the skewness of the thermal SZ signal in the ACT map. Uh, but in the intervening time, we've developed uh, the necessary theory to actually compute the full probability distribution function, the PDF, uh, which includes the information from the skewness, kurtosis, and all, all of the moments in the distribution. Um, so we're able to show that this is a very sensitive probe of the amplitude of density fluctuations in the universe. Basically, if there's a higher amplitude of fluctuations, we get more clusters, so a larger signal. And we showed that uh, using essentially the same data set as we used in our previous measurement, uh, we improve the error bar on the uh, amplitude of fluctuations by a factor of roughly two uh, just by using this more powerful statistic. Moreover, uh, a high signal-to-noise measurement of this statistic could also potentially break degeneracies between cosmological parameters uh, and parameters that describe the gas pressure profile uh, of the intercluster medium in future data. So that's something we hope to revisit in the future. Our group recently released new results from the Atacama Cosmology Telescope. First, we used very sensitive maps of the cosmic microwave background to make images of the dark matter. This is possible because of the subtle gravitational deflection that dark matter exerts as the cosmic microwave background travels across the entire observable universe. We then compared these images with images of emission from dusty, faraway galaxies obtained using the European Space Agency's Planck satellite. Using statistical techniques, we effectively found that the images of dark matter and the images of the galaxies were bright in the same places and dark in the same places. In this way, we were able to measure how galaxies trace dark matter in the universe. This paper is focused on galaxy clusters and was done with 25 co-authors from around the world. Galaxy clusters are gravitationally bound swarms of galaxies. They are the largest objects in the universe that hold themselves together with their own gravity, like the Earth, the Sun, and the Milky Way do. They are so massive that their growth rates are not affected by anything that happens on the relatively tiny scales of planets, stars, or even galaxies. Only things that happen on cosmological scales have any effect. This is why galaxy clusters can be used to measure cosmological parameters like the mean matter density of the universe and the dark energy equation of state. Galaxy clusters that are detected using the SZ effect are known as SZ clusters. One challenge in using the SZ effect to measure cluster masses is that the SZ effect is not the only source of millimeter wave radiation in the sky. Other galaxies that are in, around, in front of, or behind the galaxy clusters can contaminate the cluster's SZ signals because these systems also emit radiation at millimeter wavelengths. 
the cluster's SZ signals can be further distorted by the cluster's motions with respect to their local environments. And this is known as their peculiar velocities. The main point of our paper is to measure the impact these effects have on the SZ signals of the clusters so that we can better understand how they will propagate into the resulting constraints on cosmological parameters. We found that the strength of signals from contaminating galaxies is about 5% of the SC signals in our data. That may sound small, but it can explain about one quarter of the observed scatter and cluster masses in SC cluster surveys. So relatively speaking, it's an important effect to take into account. The uncertainty due to the cluster's peculiar velocities is approximately the same amplitude, a few percent.